What's up guys, Metal571 here, and today we're going to be talking about the HD650, the HD600, and last but not least, the HD580 Precision. So these headphones have been around for a long time. <laughs> you kind of probably already know about this, as I uh, talked about this in the HD600 review. And uh, today we're going to be revisiting... Uh, the 600, but we're also going to be talking about the HD650, which is this guy. Um, so let's talk about this. The HD650 is basically the newest version of this line. These all use a very similar driver. Um, all of them are open back dynamic headphones that are designed for reference uh, listening. So they're designed to be pretty flat. And uh, we'll get into the sound a little bit as we always do. But um, just keep that in mind throughout the review. I'm going to talk about the 580 actually before we start out here. The 580 came out a long time ago, uh, I believe, and before the 90s when the 600 came out. And uh, it uses, I believe, the same driver as the 600, uh, but you can see that the design is a little bit different. So this uh, grill was actually changed with the 600, starting with the 600. Um, if I remember reading correctly, I believe it's because the, um, the, the it actually did something with the speed of the headphone, so it was swapped out because it actually was affecting the sound. Uh, but I, don't quote me on that. <laughs> I believe that's the that's one of the larger differences. Uh, I'll talk about the sound of each of these headphones compared to each other after I talk about the general sound of this this trio of Sennheisers. Um, this one's kind of old, so it's got you know. Some of the padding is worn out up here. This is a common point that wears out. Another common point that wears out relatively often is the pads. These pads have flattened a little bit. Uh, I don't actually know if these are the original pads, probably, but these haven't had as much head time according to the original owner, but HD 580. HD600 was released in the mid-90s, as I talked about in my HD600 review. Uh, you'll get a link to that in the description at the end of the, and at the end of the video. Uh, HD600, I bought these brand new about a year ago, reviewed them, was very, very happy. They really got me out of the whole um, bright is better kind of phase of my channel, which you probably know of if you've been following me for some time. Um, really, really wonderful, awesome, balanced headphone. Um, but yeah, these have less, have the I think pretty much the same headband, same pads. Uh, but you can see that they changed out this guy. These are not not old. Another difference between the three headphones is that you can see inside here. See how this is like silver around here and silver. That was black in some of the earlier ones. And the same thing with the HD650 when that first came out. There was a that's what they mean by a black driver and silver driver. The the mesh here, uh, inside, not, not this thing on top, but I'm pointing inside the headphone, you can see it kind of reflecting the light here. This part, and then this part, that stuff is like black. On uh, It kind of looks like that on the earlier revision, and it sounds a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to get into crazy into the meshes um, in this video, but uh, you can find that kind of information on Head5 pretty easily. I do, all I know for sure is that the black, um, at least I think for sure, is that th this is also, you'll notice with the 650, this is a silver screen 650 driver. Uh, pretty new, I bought it off of uh, a Redditor, it's, he said about three months old, and uh, so yeah, it's pretty It's pretty new. Uh, the original 650 had a black um, screen and was a slightly darker than this one even is. Uh, spoiler, this is slightly darker than the 600 already. So. Anyway, those are kind of the main differences between them. Another difference is the cable. I actually swapped the pads from my 600, so they look kind of flat here. This is, these are the 600 pads that I've been using for a year, and this is brand new pads that I got off of the 650. You can kind of see the difference there. These are a lot thicker. Uh, and the cable is different. This is my HD 600 cable. I really, I kind of bashed the build quality in the cable and uh, in my HD 600 review, and uh, rightly so. This cable feels so cheap. I mean, it was designed when the 580 came out because 580 has almost the same cable as the 600. So uh, here it is. And you can see where it plugs in here. To get these out sucks. Like, there's no other way to describe it. You gotta pull it, it feels like you're breaking the thing. And uh, that was actually pretty easy in that case. But usually it's not, especially if they've never been removed before. Like, I can't even get the 580 cable out of that thing. It's just crazy. Um, but, yeah, so the, the these these cables just I'm I'm not a fan. <laughs> Bad design, Sennheiser. Come on. Well, at least they noticed that because when they got to the 650 cable, they beefed it up first of all, which is great. 
Um, and the, look at the size of these. This just, bam, just like that. Look at that. Is that so much better? So much better. Am I Zeus today? <laughs> I don't, all I care about right now is the wires, apparently. Um, so this is the quarter-inch adapter. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is actually terminated in a quarter-inch. This is the 650 cable, even though it's attached to the 600 right now. Trying not to get you guys confused. But anyway, bottom line, 650 cable, awesome way to go. Um, definitely, if you're trying to replace the cable on an old 580, for example, you're refurbishing, get the new pads and get the 650 cable OEM because it's very, very good. It's expensive. The pads are like $50, by the way, and the cables are like 40 bucks. So that's what you get for OEM part prices, guys. <laughs> So uh, try not to break your stuff, but eventually the pads will get flat and it's going to actually affect the sound. I'll talk about that a little bit as well as we, as we move on here. All right, enough about the build. Comfort-wise, these headphones are kind of similar. Um, actually, I forgot to mention that this headband is slightly different on the 650. I don't know. Don't ask me why they changed that, but they did. Anyway, um, the comfort's about the same with all three. They're quite clampy out of the box, but uh, with time... They do loosen up a bit, so if if you feel like you're getting hit, you're getting clamped by a vice when you first buy them, um, I'm warning you right now, that's what's going to happen. And uh, eventually they will, uh, or if you like leave them stretched out on top of a couple of books or something, they'll calm down with time. Uh, it'll be easier to wear them for longer periods. I have no problem wearing these things all day, every day if I had to. Absolutely no problem. But my 600 is, of course, broken in because of how many hours I've put on it. And uh, not in terms of sound, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about <laughs> physical clamping force here. So, rest assured, if they're clampy out of the box, you can fix it. It's not too bad. Um, Alright, so let's talk about uh, the sound, everyone's favorite. Alright, so the 650. So, actually, let's see, where should I start? The 580 or the 650? I guess we'll do the 650. I wanted this just to be an HD 650 review, so I guess we'll work backwards from there. Uh, but it really is just going to be a comparison of the three. Uh, the overall sound, very neutral to begin with, for, and in my definition. <laughs> There's still an upcoming video about that. You've heard me say this a billion times, uh, but neutrality is going to hugely vary between people. Uh, guarantee you on that one. <laughs> but the bass here is quite well extended for an open back headphone. They did a good job improving it actually over the 600 and the 580. I still think it's rolled off at the bottom, you know, like 20 hertz is not where it should be. It's not, this is not a planar magnetic open back odyssey, so you're not gonna get that flat bass line. Uh, but you get some roll off here still, but there's a lot less roll off, maybe like three or four dB less roll off than the 600 and the 580. And uh, there's a little bit more mid bass uh, bloat here as well. I don't really mind it. Some people are like, oh, it sounds crappy. And these are like sluggish and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, it doesn't bother me that much. It's better than the black driver version, I believe which was uh, obviously lumpy there. Not lumpy, sorry. It's smooth bass, but it's elevated and a little bit thick. So it's a little different than the 600 and 580. So that's the bass. Otherwise, though, the bass is, is all right. I mean, don't expect super uh, clean bass here, especially if you try to equalize this thing. The harmonic distortion will kill you. Uh, if you crank the, the bass up on these, which I try to do to attempt to fix the roll off, but it's difficult because you end up with a lot of harmonic distortion eating away at other frequencies in the bass that it's not supposed to, uh, based on where you put your EQ at. So yes, <laughs> the bass is um, not perfect by any means, but for a head, an open back from this era, very, very good. Um, I have no major complaints about it, uh, especially for the price. Still not bad. All right, mid-range. I love the mid-range on Sennheisers. Uh, the only problem I have with the mid-range is that it's too forward. I love that the mid-range is super, super, super uncolored on uh, these three headphones. It is so correct in timbre. It's scary, and it's what gives kind of these headphones a ridiculously accurate uh, sound is that they really nailed the mid-range timbre. It just hits exactly where it's supposed to, where your ear is expecting. I still feel to this day, this is probably just me and my love for the metal genre and rock and everything related to electric guitars that are distorted. I still think that these headphones, the 580 and 600, 
need about 3 dB less at 3.5 kilohertz, and the 650 needs about 2 dB less at 3.5 kilohertz, which is the center of the uncompensated graph peak that your ear expects, but I still think it's slightly overdone, and it makes these sounds slightly shouty, slightly harsh, that those 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 adjectives. Um, <laughs> but the mid-range, though, other than that, wow, just organic. This is the reference mid-range here. Um, for some people, they'll be like, it's just right. And But for my ears, I don't know, maybe my, my ear canal is shaped differently. I still think it's just a bit forward. Uh, treble, treble-wise. Now, we get into some differences here. The uh, 650 is notably darker, but it's not like it's just dead. It's actually pretty extended, and it's there. But it's a, you, can, it's, you can tell that it's a little bit less, like a couple dB less. Not, not nothing much, maybe one or two, maybe three max, uh, especially above 10K. You do lose a little bit of air with these. The air is there. It's just not as prominent. Um, I feel that nowadays, anyway, I said they were just perfect treble for the longest time. But nowadays, and this could be my amp. For those who don't know, I'm using a Modi 1 and a Magni 2 here, and I've been told it's a little bit bright. So it could be that, but I feel like all three of these headphones have a slight 10K peak, and I, pu I pull it down by about 3 dB. And that comes from probably my... Uh, I pull that down because in electronic music, you tend, I tend to get bothered by the, the, the treble being forward. Because electronic music is mastered with a lot of bass and treble. And then, you know, like anything electric guitar based is mastered with like the bass and treble are much less and the mids are high. So my EQ is kind of a in between from those genres. Uh, but again, I'm getting a little bit off track here. Other than that, I think the treble is just, just super, super smooth, super clean. It's one of the most immediate things that impressed me the first time I heard any of these three was the HD 600 and the treble extension just blew me away. I just had never heard that much detail in the treble of a headphone or anything. Like I had no idea that cymbals and hi-hats sounded that good on headphones or they could. So that's one thing you're definitely paying for here. But yes, the 650, confirmed, a little darker, a little thicker, a little more extended on the bass, and uh, it's quite good. And uh, soundstage-wise, these three, I, I didn't notice any obvious differences. If you guys have, let me know in the comments. Uh, but that's kind of where these are. I forgot to mention, though, one last thing in the 580s in the bass is a little bit less mid-bass, actually, than even the 600, and I heard this um, listening. And uh, we'll get into why these sound descriptions are important in just a second here. But the, the, the bass here is still a little less thick than even the 600, which is already, you know, unthickened compared to the 650, which is a real warm, gooey kind of a bass headphone. But it doesn't really sacrifice that much speed. It's just more bass. So it's cleaner bass when you EQ it to begin with. Um, and yeah, so that that's that's one other thing about the 580 I forgot to mention. Sorry about that. All right, and again, like soundstage, really too close to tell is what I pretty much just wrote in my notes here. <laughs> so equalization effectiveness. I already told you how what I feel like about the mids. I think the 650 mids are still slightly forward, but much less so than the 600 and the 580. So that's good. Um, and the treble, I pulled down 10k actually, at about 3 dB on. All three of these, I believe, uh, because that's only for electronic music. Because, like, if you don't listen to electronic music, you might as well just leave that part of the EQ out. You'll find my EQ in the description as usual. Um, and I use Equalizer APO Peace GUI. I, I know people have asked me to make a video on that. It's 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 coming at some point. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So conclusions about these headphones. Um, so the. So let me give you the prices first, as of right now, or the typical street prices right now. Now, when I bought the 600, it was about 230, I think. Um, you can correct me. Go back to my <laughs> HD 600 video. I think this is about 230. So that was an amazing, amazing price. Uh, these are easily, easily worth 299 uh, in sound quality. I feel like you're actually sacrificing a little bit of build quality <laughs> with the 600s, actually because of that chunky old cable that you end up getting rather than the 650 cable which I have attached here uh, but that aside the drivers are wonderful uh, compared to some other headphones uh, <laughs> it's just way better value because like B 
Beats, you know Beats costs like two ninety nine, right? Yeah, you should try these. <laughs> um, yeah, so two ninety nine for these. The six fifties are about three ninety nine, and the five eighties are not sold anymore. And what's really good about that is you can find these things on eBay for like two hundred bucks or less. You are practically stealing this sound quality. I would say under $250. And the great thing about the 580s is they are almost the same as the 600s. Like I said, just a little bit less mid bass. And uh, maybe ever so slightly splashier, not quite as fast, uh, probably because of the grills that I was talking about. But man, this sound quality for $200 is like a bargain of the century. Go look on eBay and get yourself a 580. <laughs> if you don't have an open back reference headphone, do it. <laughs> if you don't want to spend the money for the gooey warmth of the 650 that I really don't think at all is worth the extra $100 over the 600 then the 580 is just awesome. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's what I think about the uh, 580, the HD 600, and the HD 650. These are wonderful headphones. Sennheiser has made some really great stuff here. And uh, I hope that they follow them up with like a 690 or something. Who knows? Uh, it'd be wonderful to see what comes out next from this range for that price. Just awesome. Uh, so thanks, guys, for watching. Stay tuned for more headphone reviews, Metal 571 style. Follow me on Twitter. And uh, check out my HD 600 full review as well from back in the day. It should be mostly correct now. One of the things you'll notice about my channel is I have changed my, my opinion on what's flat over time. And there's a video coming on the HD 800. You can see back there uh, with equalization and that will give you a better idea I think of what I find neutral and whatnot and why and why my preference will differ from person to person so thanks for watching guys I uh, hope this was uh, useful and uh, like the video subscribe and make sure you comment and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can take care